Yes, kicking off with a bit of health stuff. 73,000 bags of blood are being discarded every year from people with a condition called hemochromatosis. Now, pretty much, this blood can be used for donations, but a part of their condition is that they have to get the blood removed from their body. Unfortunately, a lot goes to waste, and they throw out the bags and don't donate them. Right. So they're saying, uh, yeah, 73,000 bags a year could be used for donations. So if you do have that condition or know someone with that condition and they're losing that blood and just throwing it away, however they do that, it can be donated and save lives. There you go. Good news there. In other news, we have uh, Ned Brockman over in Sydney. You'd... Uh, You'd be you'd f- be familiar with him because he's done the run before. Ken but Brockman's it is, brother. Ken yeah, Brockman's brother. Reporter, That's yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he's the Sydney guy, about 25 years old, and he's been running around a Sydney uh, race track to raise money for homelessness. Yeah. He has just finished his uh, track running. He did about 1.6 kilometres and raised $2.1 million for homelessness in Australia. He did 1.6 kilometres. Sorry, one, sorry, <laughs> one thousand <Yeah>. six hundred and nine <laughs> kilometers. I was going to say that doesn't sound right, mate. <laughs> sorry to undercut you, Brockman. <laughs> no, nah, he did a hell of a lot more than that. But yes, the correct figure for money: two point one million dollars. That is true for 2. homelessness. Two point one million dollars. Well so done. He absolutely smashed it on that one. Yeah, that and running one point six <laughs> kilometers. He did a bloody a round of applause. Bloody fast. <laughs> but uh, yeah, also in. Adelaide local news. This one is crazy. If you can see a video online of it, it's pretty funny. There's been a cat going to the KFC at Manapara. And it's, what? It really shows that, you know, between animals, between humans, we all have one thing in common. We love that chicken. That's the missing link when we talk about evolution. It's exactly KFC. right. <laughs> that should be in the charts, in the biological charts, because this cat is loving it. Go suss a video online. It keeps sneaking out of home to steal this KFC. <laughs> <laughs> What would you say if I were to tell you you have a presentation due this week? No! <laughs> or that your those reports have spelling mistakes in them? No! Or that you have to sit in a boardroom for three hours? No! Well, wait no longer because this is not our reality for the rest of the week because the bosses are going away. Yes, the corporate fat cat and his minions are, <laughs> are leaving the office for the next two days. So we have a two-day leeway pretty much where it is, quote-unquote, what's going around in the office is that it could be anarchy. I think people mm, are picturing... The, the world, I heard. Yeah. <laughs> Apocalypse big, now. Big metal drums of fire, you know, <laughs> mutants running around the office. It's going to be like the scenes of Mad Max, what uh, people are thinking. I think so. And I was even at the pub yesterday with a few colleagues and, quote-unquote... <laughs> <laughs> Makes the pump sound all, all that more professional if you say colleagues. <laughs> but one person in particular literally said, quote unquote, I don't think anyone's going to get any work done this week. Mm. Sort of preemptively saying, we're done for. It's, uh, it's a holiday for the next two days. The boss and uh, all the other managers are out of town. Yeah, they're, they're gone from Thursday and Friday. So we thought, let's get ahead of the curb here. Let's go to the text line. What should we do tomorrow? When all our bosses are away, Adelaide, it could be absolutely anything. We can't get in trouble till at least Monday. Mm. So, yeah, there <laughs> and is... that's plenty of grace cooling down time for them to be like, well, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> I mean, maybe you've had your bosses away and you you did something. Maybe you went out for a long lunch. Maybe you, you know, cut, cut home a bit earlier. I mean, that's what I'm thinking. Surely the big one is you'll just skip out of work for a little bit, go for a lunch, get some beers. That would be the hot one for yeah. sure. <laughs> uh, what else could you do? <laughs> I mean, internal stuff like... I mean, office-wide pillow fight. Pillow fight, yeah. <laughs> Go real time. Office... All the managers think it's going to be absolute anarchy. They look at the cameras. We had an office sleepover. <laughs> they just got bean bags and sleeping bags uh, out. I mean, yeah, we could watch a movie all together in the boardroom. Hey, any suggestion is a good suggestion. What should we do while the bosses are gone? Kicking us off. Someone said, use the lack of supervision to install a remote-controlled fart machine under the boardroom table to use at select moments. <laughs> so just a technologically advanced whoopee cushion. <laughs> a high-tech whoopee. <laughs> is there such thing? Yeah, Surely, I guess. I got one out of a show bag when I was a kid. <laughs> Bring it in. <laughs> Take it out from its uh, retirement. Hey, another text coming through here. Start playing only songs that aren't in your regular playlist. Ah, uh, good one. I think we could spin a couple. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's the worst idea. 
Get some Taylor Swift on. <laughs> yeah. I've got this one here as well. Uh, I got in early when the boss was out uh, stick. See, oh, out sick. And Sticky taped everyone's mouses to the table so they couldn't do any work. Oh, it's not like... It's pretty easy to... <laughs> pretty easy to just take some Sticky tape off the mouse. But I like the idea. Maybe glue. Mm, well, just uh, kick it up a notch. Yeah, Gorilla yeah. Glue. Hey, another text here. Uh, do what you do when your parents are away and host a party. Fresh party at Fresh would be sick. Hey, I, I think we can do that for the Fresh fam. Do a <laughs> Project X, get Corey Worthington over here to uh, host the Fresh party. <laughs> Another text just coming through as well. Morning, boys. My favourite work prank is to swap everyone's family photos around. It's an office of 100. Not everyone knows each other, so it takes a hell of a long time to swap back. Mm, unfortunately, Fresh is a small office. <laughs> People are going to realise pretty soon, I reckon. <laughs> I'm just sure there's something we can move around with desks. Maybe we can move people's actual desks. Yeah, I feel like this is just going to resort to us hiding people's things. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's got these great crafty ideas. In the end, I think we're just going to steal people's uh, chairs. Hey, let's head over to Blakeview. we got Shane on the line. G'day, Shane. How are you going, mate? Morning, Tom. Morning, Callum. How are we? Morning. Very well, very well. Hey, what should we get up to while our bosses are away? Some what? I reckon I can uh, chuck in the truck and we can broadcast live from the road. What do you reckon? Oh, you know what? Broadcast live from the road? From I... the truck? <laughs> what what kind of... Bring a couple of those, a couple of those Billy Spies and uh, Red Bulls and we'll be on. <laughs> um, so there, was, there is a price. There is a deal at hand. <laughs> Shane, what kind of truck are we talking about? Are we talking about a big semi truck or... No, nah, unfortunately not. I'm just a little rig. I drive for Maztec, so shout out to the Maztec crew. We uh, deliver the, the bin. Oh, awesome stuff. Okay. And uh, oh, do you have a name for your truck? I feel like a lot of truckies have names for their trucks. Uh, you know I do. It's a uh, truck Norris because I get all the work done. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> hey, Shane, I don't mind. Uh, I actually I like that idea, Shane. We might have to we might have to give you a call back later on. We got Beck from Gillies Plains here on the line. Beck, g'day. What should we get up to while the bosses are away? Well, it was the uh, season to be jolly not that long ago and I broke into my boss's office while he was away at a meeting and when he came back, all I heard was, Beck! I'd broken into his office and made Christmas throw up in there. (laughs) Wait, so Beck, does your boss hate Christmas? Is he notoriously the Grinch? Is that why he hated it so much? Uh, Nah, he actually saw my direct line manager's office and she wanted me to um, decorate it. And I said, well, aren't you two to go to a meeting soon? And he went, don't you dare. So I was like, challenge accepted. (laughs) Sounds like you've decorated a like the Home Alone movie. (laughs) <laughs> he's bit. stepping I'm on tinsel where tinsel shouldn't be yeah. well Beck Christmas is creeping up on us maybe some early decorations could go up around the boss's office yeah for sure <laughs> Callum, like yep. most people, we love Wineback Wednesday here on the station. Not only all the great tracks we get to spin, but the things we get to reminisce about as well. Definitely. I mean, things that were beyond our time even before we were born. So we get, it's a bit of an educational thing sometimes too, <laughs> that we be. research <laughs> these things from the early 90s and yeah, it's good fun. Yeah. And I came across this video the other day of someone doing a prank voicemail. Mm. So it was a classic voicemail. That you, I feel like they used to be in such more abundance than what they are these days. I feel like everyone's voice smell these days is the generic person being like oh four blah 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 sure. can't make it to the phone right you, now you don't hear many people doing a creative one right and if you do i feel like it's old i yeah. know someone one of my mum's mates who still has a voicemail from i kid you not i reckon the late 90s right and it's yeah it's <laughs> there for, yeah yeah so it just feels like a blast from the past that it's that old but they're still rocking that one well that's what i was going to say i feel like out of all the 90s movies i've watched especially all the teen 90s movies they always seem to have like a fun voicemail so i thought why don't we bring back voicemails we have both made one uh they're going to be our new real voicemails too on our actual phones uh so we're going to want to get your opinion on them adelaide 0428927927 what do you think of our new voicemails? but should we get into them i reckon let's do it i mean sometimes they can be a little bit <laughs> a little bit mundane a little bit over the top but i think we've hit the nail on the head tom these are our voicemails that we're going to use i will right, we'll kick things off with your voicemail here it is If you're trying to call me, you've clearly not heard the news. I've packed up my bags and moved to Nepal. It is also true. I have found inner peace. I am no longer consumed by rage. You see, there's a lot more to life than having 
a heavy heart. One thing I still do enjoy, though, is a good sandwich. Let me have a look at this sucker. Cheese, lettuce, tomato, pickles. Doesn't matter what country you're in, these ingredients will cure the appetite of any broken soul. <laughs> oh, this is shit. What do you call this? There's not even any butter on it. You haven't even taken the crust off. I blew all of my money to come here for inner peace. This is a joke. I'm going back to Adelaide. My trip to Nepal, Nepal was quite harrowing, <laughs> as you heard. So that would be my voicemail for a little bit, just so everyone's aware of my holiday and what happened. <laughs> What kind of picture are you trying to paint of yourself? Uh, worldly. <laughs> worldly with a little bit of a temper. <laughs> All right. Here's my voicemail. Hi, you've reached the voicemail of Tom Holmes. There could be multiple reasons I can't make it to the phone right now. I could be... Flying my squirrel suit from the top of Mount Lofty. Yeah! I feel so free... <coughs> <coughs> Uh, bug in my mouth. Or maybe I'm... Free climbing the Crown Plaza on Frome Street. Oh, I might get the elevator down. Whoa! But most likely, I've stepped out to get myself some of that sweet, sweet dirty birdie. Order for Tom, one large singer box. Leave a message after the beep and I'll return your call after this... This, um... Ooh. <laughs> now I have to ask what trying to what, what picture are you trying to paint for yourself? <laughs> Just really looking for some free KFC. <laughs> Adelaide, let's wind back the clock. The new quiz with a bit of a spin. Wheelie Wine Back Wednesday with Tom and Callum on Fresh 92.7. That's right, Callum. It is Wheelie Wine Back Wednesday, our favourite quiz show where we get to take you for a spin through the decades. Yes, the quiz of all quizzes. It is the talk of the town. We can't wait to show it off to you. And if you haven't heard before, pop culture, movies, TV, music, any of that stuff, if you're good at it, if you're good at it around the water cooler, this game is for you. You've only got to answer three questions unless you land on the 2010s where we've already answered one for you. Yes. So let's go meet our first contestant. We're going to Power Hills. It's Nikki. Yes. Good morning, Nikki. How are Hi, you? Hey, good morning, guys. Good. How are you? Nikki. Very well. You sound very energetic. Are you ready to play as really Wine Back Wednesday? What's your go-to decade? Uh, probably somewhere around the 2000s. Good stuff. All right, the 2000s. Well, we've got our resident wheel spinner, Erin, in the oh. studio with us. Erin, can you do your best to try and get the 2000s for Nikki? I will do my absolute best for you, Nikki. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, right. guys. Let's spin, spin that, that wheel. wheel. Oh, it's going. Oh, 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 yeah. oh, 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 oh. Nikki. What have we got, Erin? Yo. Nikki, 2000s. Yes. Oh my goodness, how? <laughs> so cool. That's how good our new wheel now, spinner is. Trust. She's got the magic touch. <laughs> Thank All right. you, Aaron. <laughs> Nikki, first question for the 2000s. What film had the highest box office collections in the 2000s? Huge film. Oh my goodness. Forrest Gump? <laughs> Ooh. No. Not for a scum. No. Not for a scum. We're going to have to move on, Nikki. Thanks. Nikki, stay on the line, though. We might come back to you. We're going over to Matthew in Tennyson. Hey, how you doing, boys? Very good. Matthew, do you reckon you can sort this one? What film had the highest box office collection in the 2000s? Oh, I'm going to have to go with The Avengers. Matthew, it's not The Avengers. Oh. Matthew, stick around. Stay on the line, mate. We're going to go to Tyson in Gola. Tyson, do you know the answer? Uh, is it Avatar? <laughs> He's got it. He's got Avatar. Hey. It's either Avatar or the Avengers. <laughs> yeah, both, oh, both spare beautiful. choices. <laughs> hey, good stuff. Good start there. Tyson, this one might stump you. I'm not sure. What was a must-have fashion item for women in the early 2000s? It's very popular with celebrities. Uh, 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 I'll give you a hint. Uh, it's a, it's a pants-related thing. 
Um, I've got no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to take a stab? Any any sort of pants? If you know you're there, skinny bear- jeans. Skinny jeans, not a bad crack. Not oh, a bad crack. Not bad. Not bad. Tyson, keep staying on the line. We're going back to Nikki over in Parrot Hills. Nikki, do you know the answer? Which uh, which pair of pants um, I- was a must-have fashion item worn by women in the early noughties? Um, pants of the girls. Oh, I don't know that one. Well, Nikki, it's a type. And I think you t- think I would because I was a girl. A type of jeans, <laughs> if you can. Uh, Hit the nail type of jeans. Head. Yeah, type yeah. of jeans. Skinny jeans have been said. Think the opposite. Claire. She's got hey. it. She's back <laughs> in the game. <laughs> She's back. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Can we wrap things up right now with the final question? What social media platform came into existence in 2004? Insta. It's not Insta. Oh, oh Nikki, have to move no. On. Back to Matthew. <laughs> Matthew. Snapchat. Not no. Snapchat. Tyson. <laughs> Tyson. The skinny Gola. The skinny jeans, jeans did you dirty, Tyson, but you're back in. What yep. social media was invented in 2004? Which app? Which website? Was it Facebook? Yeah! Tyson's got it. <laughs> He's come back for the steal. <laughs> Tyson, how do you feel, mate? What's going through your head right now? I'm very confused, actually. <laughs> I up and uh, called the wrong number, so, yeah. <laughs> hey, look, it worked out for you. Tyson was actually meant to be on hold to Australia Post. Yeah. <laughs> Tom, sport goes beyond the depths of anything, right? There's so much we can enjoy as viewers and what you can watch on the TV. You have your soccer, baseball, basketball, but... Yeah, there's even more, like, stranger, more niche sure. sports out these days that you can find. Well, I was looking at it. we got cheese rolling in England where they roll right. wheels of cheese yes. down hills. Yes, I have heard of that, actually. Ostrich racing has been around a while, yeah. but, you know, people are actually watching it on TV now and stuff, so crazy things are going around. Even in Dubai, they have, like, robot jockeys riding horses. Exactly right. So. Camels, so. Yeah, so weird as, and there's all these different things, but one is taking the cake and one is going very popular on the internet right now, and it's spider fighting. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, does whatever a spider can. Now, explain spider fighting to me. Well, it sounds like you're just fighting two spiders. <laughs> what, one man against sp- a bunch of spiders? <laughs> Put it in arachnophobe yeah. in, a, in a pit full of uh, huntsmen. Bi- it's like Harry Potter and the Chamber of yeah. Secrets. There's just one big spider you go up against. it. What is a spider fight? So over in Asia, it's really popular at the moment. And I won't say it's got the traction that it's ended up on TV or anything big. It's just happening in schools, really. So it's, it's at base level okay. it's, it's on the come up but pretty much uh you'll get one spider against another spider and they'll fight on a stick <laughs> and it's really popular at the moment so it's taking over asia and a lot of people are doing it right so it's so it's popular in schools in asia where is this come about is, uh, let me guess tiktok or something yep so tiktok there are <laughs> 3.4 million views on Whoa. this one spotify video so that's where it started off as a joke oh maybe this could be televised there's a lot of people <laughs> watching it a lot of people are watching these spiders fight on a stick what happens if the spiders don't want to fight each other or just do all spiders just naturally want to fight are they like the japanese fighting fish when they see one they've just got to go at it i don't know i'm not a referee for the spider fighting <laughs> well, yeah. can you know it for me can you learn the i think spider uh, fights? I, I think for the most part what i've seen on the videos they do brawl i think it's inevitable that they will fight right. but what everyone's joking about online is the fact that kids you know back in the day the big concerns were that they graffiti or that they'd that wag yeah now they're worried about them spider fighting <laughs> <laughs> at recess and lunch <laughs> can't wait to see the sports bet odds on yeah. this one <laughs> Now, Callum, I don't know because I've never actually been one, but I'd imagine mm. there aren't a lot of firsts for police officers. Yeah, yeah. Right? You'd see a lot of different things being, yeah, a, yeah. being a cop. I feel like every day, the the phrase, uh, no day is the same, would be very true. Uh, you'd see a lot of weird things. I Hats off to them. Yeah, but over in Bedfordshire in England, there's a couple of cops that have had a first, and they were chasing after a suspect, right? They got a warrant for his home. They, they went into his house. They were searching his house, mm. tearing the place upside down. Yep. Uh, and during that process, they got to the couch, and they're like, well, we better look, it, look under the couch. So they lift the couch up, 
And then it took two cops. They're like, geez, this is a heavy, heavy couch. couch. What's going on? They lift it up and then all they see underneath the couch is the fabric <laughs> has this slit going down right. it. And then they see the back of a very hairy man <laughs> poking out in nothing but his underwear. Hiding in the couch. It's like he knew it was going to be hot <laughs> hiding in a couch. So he's stripped down to nothing but his undies. He's hiding in the couch. It's nothing but his very hairy back poking out of the slit. Yeah. And then the cops just start laughing. They're like, look who's trying to hide in the couch. <laughs> Because it's so non-serious. Non Obviously, the whole situation, trying to detain the guy. But as soon as you see the guy on the couch, surely the cops and him are having a laugh. Do you reckon he's turning around and being like, you got me. I was going to do the fridge and put a jacket on, but I thought I'd strip off and do the couch. You know he would have been good at hide and seek as a kid. Oh, right? he was a pro back in the day, apparently. <laughs> Is there a man on that couch? <laughs> what are you saying? A man in a couch? Hello. <laughs> that's absurd. Now, I believe there's a man in that couch right there. There is no man. There's no man. I believe that's exactly how it went down. <laughs>